Hey guys, Dr. Kim here. How are you? Let's take a look at this causal radiograph. I want you to spend a few uh, seconds to determine what are primary teeth, what are permanent, how does the eruption status of the right side differ from the left side, uh, how many, you've already obviously seen the title, how many extra teeth, supernumeraries do you see, those are some questions that you want to be asking yourself before I run through this radiograph with you. Because there's a lot of information that's captured here. And if you're not used to seeing a causal radiograph, this can certainly be very confusing at first. So uh, why don't we start out with what's easiest? Here um, we have two primary central incisors. And as you go just lateral to that, this should be lateral incisor, right? Primary lateral. And it looks like we're missing a lateral incisor. And right above that, you're seeing a permanent lateral, so number 10, that appears to be partially erupted out of the alveolar process. And then when you go to the lateral to that or distal to that, this should be primary canine, right? So central lateral is missing or primary lateral I mean and then primary canine and this is a permanent lateral now let's look over to the patient's right side central lateral and then you look at this does that look like a canine to you look at this and then doesn't that look a lot more like this tooth so what is that or do you say that's a primary canine and this is primary first molar well for this to be a first molar most likely it needs to have multiple roots right and you look at the root outline aha uh -huh, it's a single rooted tooth not only that it looks very much the same as the contralateral primary canine. So what does that mean? Aha. So this is a supernumerary primary lateral incisor. And this is very unique uh, because I don't uh, frequently see supernumeraries of primary teeth, at least in my clinic. Obviously, I see mostly, we treat mostly adult patients here at the school, so that might be a reason why, but I just don't, haven't encountered too many supernumeraries of primary dentition. So that's very unique case in that, in that way, in that sense. So now let's look above, superior to the roots of primary central incisors. Then we find permanent central incisors, eight and nine. And just lateral to that, we have permanent lateral incisor. Okay, so this would be 7, and that is 10. But if you look carefully, if you look at those crowns of central incisors carefully, what do you think is going on here? Like you see the overall outline of the crowns, and then there's another crown looking another like developing teeth that's going on I mean would you consider dens and dente or what's going on here right uh, so these are two supernumerary teeth that are located in the same area Phew. so there's a lot of information from this single occlusal radiograph right so if you are now having to or asked to remove the supernumeraries how would you approach, right? Would you approach buckly or palatally? We simply don't know, right? We, it's very difficult to tell. You could use a slop technique, but still, it just wouldn't be wouldn't be giving you, would not give you that precise anatomic information that you'd like. So obviously, 3D imaging, Combim CT is the first imaging modality of choice in this case. Now I'm going to show you Combim CT scan of this area. I have moved my sagittal plane such that you can look at the 
primary central incisor, number eight, permanent central incisor, and then the supernumerary two. Okay. So where is it located? It's located pretty much directly palatal to tooth number eight. Let me also play with this 3D rendering. Remove, take away the bone. And this might be the easiest way to uh, comprehend the spatial relationship. Two central, permanent, primary, supernumeraries. So let's scroll through the sagittal view right there. And then let's go over to the side of number nine. So there it is, primary, supernumerary, permanent number, uh, tooth number nine. What about the location or angulation of the tooth, right? Because of the supernumerary, tooth number nine is very much horizontally located. Let's look at number eight as well. And that's also true for number eight. Perhaps not as much, but it's very much horizontally tilted. right here. So that's tooth number nine. And that is tooth number eight. Let's look at the coronal view. Permanent, supernumeraries, and primary. Let's look at the axial. Permanent, eight and nine. Supernumeraries, and then primary. All right, um, that's all I will discuss for now. Um, there's a lateral incisor, primary lateral. There's a supernumerary of that lateral. And we barely, barely capture the primary canine, letter C. All righty, um, yeah, again, these are really really great cases and I hope you can take a lot away from this because what are the chances that you will run into this in your own clinic not very much so right but the benefit of working at the college is I get to see um, you know a lot of interesting cases I mean just think of tens and thousands of patients that come through the door at dental school and if they're very interesting enough they all come through my desk so I have this a great benefit of learning from everyone's interesting case and because I get to share this with you you are learning from uh, this other students cases so anyway thank you very much for your attention I'll see you in the next video take care